Wow, now the pressure's on. He had animation in his slides. And I have five minutes worth of slides, but really only like two minutes worth of talk. Okay, so how many of you use open source? How many of you contribute to open source? Hurry, we got five minutes here. No, you don't. Welcome to Opensville, population zero. I hear about everybody doing all this open source stuff. I've never had you check in code to my project. It's true. Everybody talks about it because everything is open, right? Everybody opens big. Social media is open and also experts. And, uh, you know, it's true. It's true. You guys said it, not me. All right? So everything's open. Everybody's, you know, trying to run this. And everybody already uses open source. You guys, you surf the web, right? The majority of those websites you visit are run on open source. How many of you use Linux? This is the three guys can go, woo, real loud. Come on. There's like five of you. <laughs> Let's go, right? So, and open source is cheap. It's not free. How many people think it's free? It's not. You have to spend time doing it, right? You, this, it's ridiculous to say that it's free. It takes effort, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of trouble. If you don't do it right, what happens? You end up getting a half-assed project and paying a proprietary person 10 times as much. And contrary to popular belief, open source is not a real business model. How many of you have been told it is? How many of you invested in Red Hat or something? It's not a business model, we'll get to that later. It's just more software. And by the way, how many of you run an open source project? Come on, scream it out. There's three of you. I need you. All right? No one cares how many times you downloaded your own software. We've been downloaded a billion times on SourceForge. It was you. We know it. It's cool. You got a Perl script. Nobody's doubting you. No big deal. If you build that project, those of you who are downloading it yourself know, no one will come use it. Okay? It's like all these projects, we're open source. There's millions of users. No, there's not. I work with a project called Nagios, which is one of the largest open source projects in the world. We have 300,000 users after 10 years. All right? And even if your CEO thinks that nine women can have a baby in a month, they cannot. It is impossible. So I, why would he come to you and say, hey, you know what we should do? We should open source that, and then these magical developers out there will build our stuff for us, and then we'll sell the company for $100 million. It sounds good. That's because there's no such thing as open source software engineer. If you're sending me a resume, stop putting that on it. You are a software engineer or you are not. I don't care if you gave the code away or not. It, it makes no difference it's how you write code. Everything, every one of these projects is competing for a finite amount of developers, a very small amount. So the last company I was at, the CEO said, you know what we should do? We should open source it, and then those guys will build it for us. No, there's like a billion projects that want that, 230,000 apparently, and five, maybe 15 open source developers are actually worth hiring. But out of the projects on SourceForge, almost a quarter million of them, 95% of them are dead. Do you guys know why? Who knows why, anybody? Because as soon as your open source developer gets a significant other or a job, your project is gone. How many people agree with that? Come on. That's right. It's over. Over. I have a girlfriend and a job. So, contrary to popular belief. But the thing you forget about it when you're building software, whether it's open source or proprietary, is people download the shovel, but they want the whole. They are trying to do something with your software. It is not downloaded, it does not tell you how great it is, and it certainly is not write code and contribute to it, period. Open innovation, I said I was gonna talk about that. It's not easy. How many of you take feedback from your customers? How many, wow. I do not wanna be your customer. So we'll skip over that one. Thank God that slide changed. But uh, you have to build things with a community, not for them. Everybody I know builds a project and they kick it out and they're like, nobody's using it. It's like, well, did you ask them what they needed? No. Right? All right, so when we built a project at SourceForge uh, that I did with them, we let everybody have root access to the server, which scares everybody in here. But it worked, right? Because being op open is a double-edged sword. It can build a lot of credibility. It can also tear a lot of credibility down. Right? How many of you consider your business open? None of you? One person? Should call that person up here. So the fact is, is you can't just say you're open. You have to follow through because if you're not, that community will rip you apart. And if you say you're going to incorporate the feedback, you better because customers will tell you what they want, okay? They'll tell you how to build it, how much they'll pay for it, and everything if you will shut up and listen, period. How many of you have, so none of you are open, how many of you have products that if you had the chance, you would wring the neck of the engineers that developed it because you hate using it? Come on, everybody, everybody, or... That was like 10 people. Listen, it's because software is software is software. There is no difference between proprietary and open source software. 
They both have code, they both have to be compiled. You have to have some engineer that you give a slice of a slice of a slice of the pie to build that software. It's binary. You're either open or you're not. You have to do it, you have to follow through. It is a way of life, it is a way of running your business, whether it's software or not. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.